Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel, Project Vagrant, where we bring you on our van build journey every week, and we strive to inspire you guys to chase your dreams the same way we are. So in today's video, we're starting a new series about solar power and how to calculate and figure out your solar system for your van or tiny home or whatever it is that you're taking on. In today's video, we're gonna calculate your battery size and how big your solar array needs to be. So let's get right on into it. The very first step is to make a list of all the devices you wanna power per day, the watts they consume, and how many hours per day you're gonna use them on average. So I've already got my list started here. Leave a little bit of room on the end if you can because we're gonna add a column here in a moment. So you should be able to find the wattage on the device itself, in its manual, or online. If you cannot, but you can find the amps and the voltage, you can calculate the wattage with that formula. I had to do it for our laptop, so it pulls 4.5 amps at 20 volts. You multiply these two numbers and you get the watts. Another thing I'd like to know is some of these things is gonna be hard to estimate, like your fridge. A good way to estimate that is to say it's gonna run about a quarter of the day. So that'd be about six hours. Fridges usually run for about 15 minutes and then they kick off. And then the temp goes up and then they turn on for about 15 minutes and then they kick off. So it's a pretty safe estimation right there. So after you've got your first step done, you've got all your loads listed, the power they use, and the hours they're gonna be used. We're gonna take that data and we're gonna calculate your watt hours. That's the second step. So to do that, all you have to do is go across each row and multiply your watts by your hours and then add it to this line. I'm gonna add a column just labeled watt hours. You should be able to do all this math with just the calculator app on your smartphone. You don't need anything special. Once you've got all of the watt hours for each device listed, you just wanna go through and go ahead and add all of these up and get your total watt hours used per day. This is essentially how much power you're gonna use from your batteries every single day. Now go ahead and save this number because we're gonna use it later for another calculation. So I'm gonna highlight mine. The third step is to take this watt hour number and we're gonna convert it to, to amp hours, which is what batteries are typically rated in. So to do that, all you're gonna do is divide it by the voltage of your battery bank. This is typically gonna be 12 volts. I had 1662 watt hours, and then when I divided that by 12, I now have 138.5 amp hours. So before we move on to the next step, I like to take that amp hour number and throw about 25 to 40% on as overhead. This is just for those days where you might use your devices a little bit more than you were expecting to. You don't wanna run out of power because that's gonna be super annoying. So all you have to do is take the amp hours you've calculated and add 25%. And you'll do that by just multiplying it by 1.25. If you'd like to add a little more, feel free. So I'm gonna take mine and multiply it. So I've got now 173 amp hours. So now what you're gonna do is we're gonna calculate how big of a battery bank you need. And this is gonna be dependent on one thing, the chemistry of your batteries. So you're either gonna be using lithium batteries or you're gonna be using lead acid based batteries. Lead acid batteries are flooded lead acid, SLA, sealed lead acid, AGM, and there's other names, I believe. If there's anything I missed, I'll put it on the screen right now. So the factors are gonna be different depending on if you're lithium or lead acid. For lithium, you're gonna take your amp hours and multiply it by 1.25. If you're using lead acid, you're gonna multiply it by two, and this is gonna give you your battery capacity. You might be wondering why these numbers are different for each battery type, and it's because lithium is actually more energy dense and you can discharge it further than you can lead acid. So for example, with lithium, you can discharge them all the way down to 20% charge without it damaging the battery. But with lead acid, you can only use 50% of its capacity, so you have to double it for your power needs. So now I take my number, I'm gonna multiply it by 1.25 because I have a lithium battery bank. So I've got about 216 amp hours. You can round this up or down as you need because you're not gonna find a battery that's exactly 216 amp hours. Now that we know how big our battery is, we're gonna go back to that watt hour number and we're gonna calculate how big of a solar area we need. So if you remember, I said that that watt hour number is actually the total amount of power we use per day 
on average. So we're gonna add a little bit of overhead to that just like we did for the batteries for those days where it's rainy or overcasted and we're not gonna get as much sunlight, as much good sunlight rather. So take your watt hours. For me, that's 1,662. And let's add that overhead. Like I said, I like to do 25%, so I'm gonna multiply it by 1.25. It's up to you what you use here. If you wanted to do 30%, that would be 1.3. If you wanted to add 40%, that'd be 1.4. Whatever it is that you think is best for your situations. So that's gonna give me 2,077 watt hours. So to calculate how many solar panels we need, this is pretty simple. So we basically get roughly five hours of good steady sunlight per day when your panels are in one solid position. So we just divide this watt hour number by five because that's how many hours of sunlight we're gonna get per day. And that leaves me with about 415 watts. So for my setup, I've calculated I'm gonna need a 200 amp hour battery and I'm gonna need about 400 watts of solar power, solar panels. I hope this video was very informative for you and I hope it was easy for you guys to follow along. Now you're all set to go ahead and start planning out the rest of your solar system now that you have a basis to build it up from. Now, one thing I would like to note before we finish this video off is, and remind people, a lot of people don't think about this, is you don't have to get all your power from solar. There are other options, so you could run a generator or what you could do is you could get an alternator charger and connect your vehicle's alternator to your house batteries. And that way, anytime your vehicle is running, it takes that excess power that's just literally going to waste from your vehicle and also use it to top off your batteries. I really hope you guys learned something today and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any feedback, comments, questions, I'd love to hear them below. If you're, computer, if you're converting a vehicle, tell me about it below, guys. I dig that stuff. If you wanna check out our next episode of this series where I compare lithium and lead acid batteries and tell you the pros and cons of each, click here. Or if you wanna see that stuff that YouTube thinks you'd like to see, check out this video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.